tonight is one of those nights that, uh, you know, a lot going on in Des Moines. And we need to definitely keep the family of officers in prayer. Yes. You know, it's <clears throat> when you always look at human beings, everyone was created for a reason. And to have that happen to them and the families that left. And, and I know there's a lot of people that's asking questions. You know, they, when, when tragedies happen, a lot of times you hear that, uh, God, how could this happen? You know, what, what's going on? But there's one thing that's always constant when it comes to God. God is still God no matter what. Yes. Okay? He doesn't stop being God because unhappiness happens in her life or tragedies happen in her life. That's the time for us to look deep down inside. Uh, my sister, <clears throat> she always used to say, a lot of times when we was on the phone, she said, Tim, it always pays to be ready. Because you do not know if this is your last day. Now we we you know we plan for the future. You you, you plan on going to work or doing whatever you, you know you make your plans, but you don't know if it's your last day. The best thing you can do in your life is every day. I was I was driving to work today, and the song "Have Thine Own Way, Lord." That that song was saying, and I just it's just that surrender to God. Whatever happens today, I know you're in the midst of. I don't understand it. That's Excuse me. That's one thing. You know, heaven, heaven's the only place with all the answers. It's the only place. Because some answers down here we'll never understand, we'll never get. But in Isaiah 41.10, this was on my heart all day today. Isaiah 41.10. Mm -hmm. Fear not, there is nothing to fear, for I am with you. Do not look around you in terror and be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen and harden you to difficulties. Yes, I will help you. Yes, I will hold you up and retain you with my victorious right hand of righteousness and judgment. Behold, all the, they who are enraged and flame against you shall be put to shame and confounded. They who strive against you shall be as nothing and shall perish. This is verse 11. Verse 12, you shall seek those who contend with you, but you shall not find them. They, they who war against you shall be as nothing, as nothing at all. For in this verse 13, for I, the Lord your God, hold your right hand. I am the Lord who says to you, fear not, I will help you. We want to never forget that, folks. Never forget. I always get a picture of, of holding the right hand of, you know, uh, a mom or dad or somebody walking them across the crosswalk. You know, they're holding their hand. Last the last night I was coming home and these kids was going over to karate practice. They looked like they was two or three years old. And the one kid was so happy he was going and he was holding his dad's hand. You know, he was holding his hand and a dad's holding his. And I'm telling you what, you know, traffic come through there and that dad's got hold of that kid's hand. Because, you know, kids can, kids can let go of it. And take off, but that dad held that kid's hand, yeah. you know, and, I, and I, that picture just stuck to me that that's what it's about. God holds your hand. God loves you so much. Never, ever forget that in the midst of tragedy, no matter what may happen. When he says, you know, the one thing about the word of God, we can trust. Him. We can trust because Jesus is the word. We can trust him. You know, some people say this and that. I'll see you Tuesday. You might not ever see him. You know, or yeah, I'll lend you five, brother. You might not ever sing. I remember John, this, the kid I went to school, his name was Charlie Brown. I, he borrowed 50 cents from me clear back in the 60s to get a hot dog. You know, I pay you back Monday. Well, shoot, that was 40 years ago. <laughs> Charlie Brown ain't never paid me back. I'm a star. Huh? A lot of interest on that. I could buy me a hot dog factory waiting for that guy. But, but what I'm saying, <clears throat> you know, that's just words. But when God says it, yeah. he means it. Yeah. If God says, I am with you, that's what he means. Yes. If yes. God says, I'm not going to hold, you know, loose hand, I'm going to hold your hand, he's going to hold your hand. Yes. When he says, I am with you, I am with you. If he said, I've never seen the righteous forsaken, David, he, David proclaimed that in 70 years. How did David do it? David lived 70 years, and he said, I was young, but now I'm old. I, that was my life scripture for so many years. I am young, but now I'm old. Yet have I not 
seen the righteous forsaken or seed begging bread. How do you know that if you haven't lived that? Right. You know that God's come through every time. Yep. You know, and I, and I love the fact that, you know what? If we just trust God, have thine own way, Lord. Have thine own way. I'm a surrender. We used to sing just a chorus uh, a lot of Sundays. Soul say yes. We used to sing it. Soul say yes. We just kept saying it over and over. And then there was a song uh, this preacher's wife used to sing, Hold to God's unchanging hand. Amen. We used to sing that. She loved that little chorus. Hold to God's unchanging hand. I asked her about that. I said, is that a new song? I hadn't heard it. Well, and and until and I got Christians to know, Tim, that's an old song. We Amen. sang that a lot. Hold to God's unchanging hand. And that's what we need to always be. And tonight as we go into prayer and, and praise uh, uh, God, let's think about hold to God's unchanging hand. Because a lot of people got a lot of questions. Yeah. And we will lift up the families of the officers. Yeah. We're going to lift up the young men who also died. You know, it's been a lot of, a lot of things have happened in this, yeah. in this just the last week. Yeah. You know, but one thing, like I said, it started out. God's still God no matter what. Right. Never, ever forget that. Mm -hmm. So tonight as we come to praise him and thank God for him being God and the fact, you know, um, he rejoices over us with singing. Yeah. And every time I hear that scripture in my head, it's just like rocking a little baby. Mm -hmm. You know, them babies, they just look up at you with, the, with that little smile, them big eyes, you know. And they love lullabies. A lot of the babies, I mean, they can be they can be crying and everything, but if you can get them rocking in a rocking chair, usually that rhythm, you know, can kind of get them calmed down. And I love it when you hear mom say those sweet things. Well, he's the only baby, Tim. I said, but you know what? That soothes them, that yeah. soothing voice. Yeah. You know, I love you. I love you. And you start speaking positive things over your kids. That's what I love, and that's what parents, grandparents ought to do. Speak positive things yes. over your kids. Yeah. You know, I, it just bugs me to no end when a, a mom says some mean things. You know, well, you're, you'll never amount to nothing, you know. And, you know, you're, you're this way or that way. So, no, speak positive things. You know, speak something positive in her life. You know what? You're going to grow up. One of the things I praise the Lord for my kids is that when we get together, one thing they'd ask, you know, uh, you know, I'd ask them what they want to be when they grow up. You know, what do you want to accomplish? Well, Daddy may like to teach or, or do this. I said, hey, you know, hey, right on, you know, because I want to be with you. Whatever you want to accomplish, because you know what? God created you for a purpose. We all have a future and a hope in Christ, mm -hmm. and he has a purpose. We're not born in vain. Everybody on this earth that's came down through here has a reason for being here. You ever wonder why you were born at this day and age of your life at this point? Because we could have been born in the 1800s, right, or 1700s. God has a purpose right now. There's a purpose person you may reach that nobody else can reach. You ever think about that? You know, I mean, I went down the street. I remember one time I was driving a truck and we was going down uh, 14. And, and this is how God puts, puts you on your heart for other people. I was going down the street and here was this guy. Now we're driving trucks down through there, you know. And this young man, I figure he's probably in his 30s. He had his shirt off and he had, he had his T-shirt but you can tell he must have been drunk or something. And he kept stumbling back and forth. Now one step on 14, out there where the trucks are running, we was down there scoring a block of pizza down in there, they had them RVs. One step off of 14th, it'd be, he'd been done. Because yeah, right. the trucks are going there, getting speed going up a hill. And I remember, and I, I know I should probably get so animated going in a truck, but sometimes I do. And I saw that young man going there, and you know, the people in the other truck, um, Beside me, I thought, man, what's wrong with him? But you know, I remember saying, no, no, no. That's not the plan for that man's life. That's not for him to be stumbling drunk out here on 14th and getting ran over. There's more for that guy's life than that. Uh -huh. And I, I remember just, just saying, no, no, no. You know, and I'm going to pray for him. I don't know what happened to him. I never did see him again. Maybe he stumbled into a church. Maybe that happened. <laughs> Instead of stumbling out in traffic. But you know what? I'm not going to give up on that. And we shouldn't give up on other people, whether it's our grandchildren or our, our, our co-workers. You know, you may have that difficult co-worker that just seems to aggravate everybody. Well, you know what? If we spend half the time talking, you know, sometimes people talk and get, well, I don't like him. I don't like him. You know what? Well, I'll tell you what we do. 
Rather than say we don't like him, let's have a prayer meeting about him. Yeah. Yeah. Let's see if that can turn things around. Yeah. And tell him, you know what? Do you got some issues going on or something like that? Maybe we can just sit and have coffee. What's going on? It's amazing when you take that time and you say this. Very rarely have I had a person reject this when I say, you know what, brother? I'm going to pray for you. Mm -hmm. Very rarely have I ever had a person say, well, I don't appreciate you praying for me. You know what I've already had? It says, you know what? I appreciate you doing that. Right. That's what I had. And, and you know what? When people give me prayer, hey, Tim, you pray for them? I write them down. You know why? Because then I can remember to pray for them in the future. And then I want to find out what God did for them. Yeah. You know? Yeah. that It's not just lopsided. Because if you tell somebody, well, I'll pray for you. You know, would you pray for this? Shoot, you might forget five minutes after church or or next week, but if I write them down, especially as I go through the Bible and I come across, oh, hey, I remember when I prayed for this person. I'm gonna pray for them again. Mm -hmm. So as we go to as we go to prayer and praise tonight, uh, and prayer requests that's gonna be lifted up, let's realize that God is with us, Amen. and we do not need to fear. And the Bible says, you know, if you keep your mind stayed on Him, He gives you that perfect peace. If you keep your mind stayed on the Lord, and that's what we always need to do, yes. focus on God. Yes. And so tonight, let's go ahead and go to prayer. Uh, the prayer requests, obviously, we're going to pray for the officers, pray what's been going on uh, in our country. Obviously, um, we're going to continue to pray about the election. That's important. Yes. It's, it's not where the person's in the politics, but we're supposed to pray for our leaders. That's right. what the Bible says. We're right. supposed to pray for them. You know, pray that, that God would guide them to make the right decisions. Because right. they do affect us. Do. You know, they, they absolutely do. Mm -hmm. So we're going to pray. So we're going to open the floor up tonight. Yes, Pastor. I just want to uh, thank everybody for praying for my daughter and my oldest daughter. She yes. had surgery last uh, Thursday and came through fine. She's Good. She's recovering and everything's going well. So I appreciate that. Amen. Good. Thank the Lord for being with her and touching her. Amen. Amen. Good. Amen. Good. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Thank yeah. You. Yeah, it, it is so important to be able to pray for one another and, and be able to go to church and have people pray. Amen. That I tell you what, that, that prayer can change a person's life to know. Because surgeries, there's a lot of stress in surgeries. I, I've had three of them, and, and I know it's, it's a lot of stress, but there's somebody praying for you. That kind of alleviate. I, I remember I had back surgery in 91, and a young man uh, that I went to church with, and I, they was going to take me down about 8 o'clock, and he worked all night. And he came, he came up to my room just before they took me down. And I said, what are you doing here? He says, well, I know you're going to go to surgery, and I want to pray for you before you went down. Yeah. So hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. But he, he had a bunch of writing papers. I said, why do you bring up paper? He said, because, Tim, I'm going to stay here until you get back. I never forgot that. Yeah. You know, he could have done something, but I will be here when you get back. Yeah. So you will see me yeah. and, and know that I stayed with it, and I, and I prayed for you. And he was just, and he sure was. At eleven thirty, I came back at, up in the room, and he was still there. Yeah. You know how powerful! I never forgot that. Right. That's when you really care. And you know, people can say they're Christians; they they can say a lot of things. But I tell you what, you can prove that proved to me his heart was real. Right. That right there. Yeah. So so that, that is so important. That that just touched me, and I, I just praise the Lord for him. Yeah. You know, someone someone else. Yes. Okay, well, that's, that's another prayer request, too. Amen. You know, Amen. that midweek, uh, old, an older pastor used to say, tell me this. He said, what if we, uh, you know, this is the word of God, so we're supposed to eat it. And, but think if we only ate once a week. Yeah. You know? right. <laughs> physically, if physically we ate once a week, uh, you know, okay. you know, we could go back to those restrooms they had in the 70s where the door was about this big. Because I think we could fit them at the at the at the restroom, yeah. you know, the doors. I remember that uh, truck stop down there on Guthrie, man. The do bathroom doors about that big, yeah. you know. And I'm thinking, was we that skinny back in the '70s, you know? Shoot, I had to go in that door sideways. Let me tell you. Yeah. <laughs> you know? But but you know, it's, it's like yeah. I mean, uh, Wednesdays, any any time you can. Be with God's people Amen. and hear God's word. You're always better for it. Absolutely. You know, a person told me, he says, Tim, you can never talk to the wrong person about God. To get energized, testimonies, to hear that in the middle of the week. Yeah, I realize it does take 
sacrifice. People work, and, and I understand. They got family. I understand those things. But we do love coming to church and, and being able to be part. Sometimes I can't because I work uh, sometimes during the week. But, but to me, I love being here because it's like that little boost in the middle of the week to get you to the next next time we meet again. Amen. Yes, so we'll pray for that. Amen. Yes. Uh, look up Cindy. She wants to be here. She was all day packing and just it's wearing her out. And want to stand with her. And we'll even pray for her uh, to complete the healing that we know that she would receive. Uh, also, I have a co-worker uh, that I have to do double duty. I have to cover for him for the next few days. He's going to get his gallbladder taken out tomorrow. Oh. And uh, he's supposed to be back Monday, but I was supposed to take a day off Monday. We'll definitely pray for that, and that's that's what God can do. Yeah. You know, I, I love, is anything too hard for the Lord? That's right. You know, some people ask me things, Tim, can God do this? They said, he can do anything. Mm -hmm. Anything right. but lie. That's yeah. what the Bible says, anything. Well, and and there's nothing too big. Well, you know, sometimes we, we, you know, we think we have a big problem, but the problem is that we look at that problem, it's bigger than God, and ain't the way it is. Right. We have a big God that's bigger than our problem. You know, Tammy Faye, God is bigger than anything. You know, she's saying, and that's true. God is bigger, and we got to make him bigger than our problems. We think that God can't handle what we're going through. You know, that makes God pretty small. We need to make God bigger, you know. I tell you, it's almost like we think God is surprised on what's going on in life, you know. Why, why how can somebody that created you, that knitted you in your mom's womb, knitted your personality, and it's going to surprise him? You know, that's what I, as, as, a, as, a, as somebody has been driving for a lot of years, I, I love it when somebody comes up and, 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 and you know, they throw the, have, have a situation. You know, how should we handle this? Well, one thing, one thing about experience that teaches you, it doesn't make you the best at what you do, but you, you know what works and what doesn't work. Because you've already had, you've already had, I, I know how to turn certain corners because you've already had the situations, you know. <laughs> We, we was downtown by the ball field the other day, let me tell you, and, and they had to, from going off of Martin Luther King and make a left on Southwest Third, they said the right lane was closed. Yep. That wasn't the case. All the lanes going through was closed, Woo! except for you had to make a left and a circle around back to go north. Oh. And to make that right, and we come through, and you couldn't see it till we got down there. So I got the student down there. Mm -hmm. What do you think about this, Tim? I said, we'll get through Tell you what, I'm getting on the ground. You just listen to what I'm saying. We'll get through it. Yeah. You know what? We got through it. Yeah. So this ain't nothing new. Ain't nothing new under the sun. Yeah. Let me tell you, there's nothing new. Because I'll tell you what, we got God with us. Yeah. Yes. I'm tell you, if we got to back all the way back up to downtown, we'll back up to downtown That's if we right. need to. Yeah. But we'll right. get through this. Because right. we serve a mighty God. Yeah. Yes, James and Ron back there. Yes. So much now to us. Yes. Uh, I think I've been hearing that God has dispatched his war angels to combat this. So we have principalities, powers, and groups of darkness in our midst. And we're Brother Daniels. Right. That's right. Amen. Amen. And that, uh, I'm glad you brought that up. I, you know, <clears throat> you know, God does prepare his people. And, and sometimes <clears throat> when God, God does speak to us in, in dreams and, and visions. And, and it was like one night, you know, I saw like the heavens and I saw all this activity going on. I mean, it was like, like if you think about a war, this, 
missiles shooting off here, and it was like all these sparks was flying, and it was like all this activity. And this is what you're saying. It was like all this activity was in heaven. It wasn't calm. I mean, there was a lot of activity, and God was showing me a picture of that. And what it takes is Daniel. In, in, individuals willing to stand in the gap. In, individuals willing to pray, intercede, and believe God. You know, and, and I, I, I love Daniel because, you know, when we talk about that, when he took 21 days to get, get the answer when he prayed, and they were up there fighting. You know, right. they had to get reinforcements. That, that, it's a serious thing. It's a serious thing. But what God takes is his people. You know, that's why, that's why in, in 2 Corinthians or 2 Chronicles we talk, it's my people. You know, it, interesting, it says my people. It doesn't talk about worldly people. He talks about my people. If my people will humble themselves and pray, that's who he's talking about, those believers. If they would humble themselves and pray, what a difference that would make. You know, if we would get serious and pray, some of the best time you can ever spend is that first few minutes of the day when you spend it with God. That, that, that'll that revolutionize. People say, well, you know, I, I can't pray for an hour. Well, maybe you can't pray for an hour. Can you start praying for five minutes right. or ten minutes? And stretch that out and spend it with God. Hey, God, you know what? We're going to lock arms. You know, we're going to lock arms one with another. And we're going to pray that this whole change, this whole situation changes. Because it is fought in the heavenlies. Amen. That's exactly right. Yes. Before I forget, uh, Suzanne's sister had a heart attack today. Had a heart situation today. So we pray for her. Yeah. Quickly. Okay. Okay. James? Well, yeah, my, my wife told me today oh. that I had blood going to the wing, and I don't know what else now. I either think she's on the allergies, and you know, just kind of, I don't know. I mean, I think they could find out who did it, and I don't know why in the world they didn't secure the area in the first place, because they have stuff back there. We used to have crates back there. We have since still secured the area. It could be as much as their fault. We'll definitely, you know, that's what we're here for, James, Amen. to pray for those Amen. different needs. Amen. Okay. All right. Yes. I stopped and seen uh, Myron oh. today, and uh, his pain level is from, uh, you know, went from a seven to down to a three, and he's anticipating uh, being able to make it Sunday. Good. So we'll, Good. Know, Okay, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Okay, uh, would y'all stand? We're going to go to prayer, please. <clears throat> Father God, tonight we heard in your word, fear not, I will help you. I will hold your hand. I will be with you. Lord, we always need to hear that. Let it sink deep down in our heart that we won't forever forget that. Father God, that you would be with Suzanne's sister, had that heart attack. Oh, Lord, that you can go in and touch her and heal her right now, Lord, that you're able to do that. You are the one that healeth. You are the divine healer. That same Jesus that touched in those days is still the same Jesus that can touch now. Oh, Father God, that you would, you would be at James in that situation with his bike and allergies and dog. All those situations that you're more than able, you're more than able to take care of. They will find out who took that bike and they can bring it back. Oh, Father God, too, we, we ask you to be with Cindy, the health situation, Lord. We claim the victory already in that situation that she can come back. And, and my co-worker, that the gallbladder, that, that Lord, that they'll, they'll discover it's not as bad as they think. And, 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 and that situation will be all taken care of. Oh, we, Lord, we thank you for healing Pastor's daughter and, and that, and that, that whole, she come through the surgery. Lord, we thank you for that. 
Lord, hallelujah. And as Ron talks about that spiritual warfare, we know there's a lot of things going on. That there is an unseen world. There is angels moving. There is evil in the world. But there, the Bible says, greater he that is in you than he that is in the world. Then, Father God, that's what it's about. We need to lift you up. Lord, Father God, in the name of Jesus, never let us forget how powerful you are. The wonderful, mighty God, our Savior, the one that can turn the whole world around. He just wants ones that are willing to stand in the gap. One that said, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord. I will do what you ask me to do. <coughs> Father God, too, that we've been destined to be with Myron. Lord, we thank you that his pain level has went down. We thank you, Lord, that you just totally heal him, get all that pain out of his body, that he can come to church. And also, Lord, that's brought up the issue of the Wednesday night services. Lord, I know there's work and there's other situations, but Lord, we're just going to ask you to fill this place up. Fill this place up. Whether it be with kids and people living in the neighborhood, whoever, just draw them into you. Because, Lord, your word is life-changing. Your word is the thing that we need most in our lives. Father God, your word never fails. Your word is so important. When you say you love us with an everlasting love, we can claim that. Lord, when you said it's in the beginning, God, Lord, we can claim that. We know as we sing an old song, Victory in Jesus, we know that the victory is found in you. Lord, tonight as we go deeper into the service, Lord, that you would be with everyone that's not able to be here. Be with those ones, Lord, that have any needs whatsoever, yes, that you would touch them. Touch their heart, soul, mind, and body. Bless them whichever way they need to be blessed. And Father God, we thank you for the opportunity to come into your house. Come into your house and praise you. Father God, we thank you for providing for us. We thank you for our homes and our clothes and our finances. We thank you for everything you're doing in our lives, Lord. Those needs that we didn't utter tonight, Lord, we ask you to meet those needs. Lord, let us never forget that you are a mighty God, wonderful counselor, our Father, the one that changed our lives around, the creator. Oh, Father God, tonight, change us. Change us every day so we can be more like you that people will see that we have been with you. That's what it's about. That we can sound like you, we can act like you. Because we are children of the King. Yes. And Father God, we thank you for tonight. We thank you that we can come and praise you. Because it's a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. And Lord, we thank you in your wonderful holy name. We pray, amen, amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. If you have your cell phone, please put it on vibrate or uh, if you can, turn off. Okay, uh, Eastern Gate House of Prayer. It's going to be November 11th, amen. 7 p.m. And we can get Friday, Aaron Burrow. We want to know the outcome of the election and the situation like that. But we're only supposed to be clearly uh, after the early reports of morning with uh, I said, Lord, why, why is this region so unsettled? Because he says <clears throat> the bride of Christ has failed to intercede and stand for the gap of this region. And in many places, the region has overtaken the bride of Christ. Do you pray like this? And to remind the unity. So this is an opportunity. I, I even posted, I don't know if you saw the post or not, because so many prayer gatherings lethargic, I guess is for lack of words that I have, um, that people aren't really hungry. And what's it going to take? What's it going to take for this region to get on its knees and, and seek the Lord's face and see what he wants to do? See what the strategies are that he desires, what he wants to do to impact this region for his heart. Amen. We're coming together. This is an opportunity. Go with the Lord. 
Okay, uh, we have a soup dinner coming up uh, November 20th after church. So sign up sheet. We have a sign up sheet. So. Yeah. <laughs> All right, and we're going to speak the word, please. Will you not revive us again that your people may rejoice in you? Hallelujah. I am a believer, and these signs do follow me in the name of Jesus. I cast out demons, I speak in new tongues, I lay hands on the sick, and they do recover. Christ has redeemed me from the curse of the law, therefore I forbid any sickness or disease to come upon this body. Every disease, germ, and every virus that touches this body dies instantly in the name of Jesus. Every organ, every tissue of this body functions to the perfection to which God created to function, and I forbid any malfunction in this body in the name of Jesus. I receive the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him, the eyes of my understanding being enlightened, and I am not conformed to this world, but am transformed by renewing of my mind. My mind is renewed by the word of God. The Lord rebukes the devour for my sake, and no weapon that is formed against my finances will prosper. All obstacles and hindrances to my financial prosperity are now dissolved. The Lord has pleasure in the prosperity of his servant, and Abraham's blessings are mine. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Brother Ron, would you come up and be so kind and take the offering tonight? Hallelujah.
years at, and I said, I guarantee you this man is heading west. And then within two hours when they caught him, they, they found him, and he was in Redfield, he was west. He says, how do you know that? He said, the Lord, the Lord is revealing, I'm praying for the servants, and the bride of Christ needs to hear what the Lord has to say. Because there's so many of us that come, many even here on Sunday, we're hearing from the Lord and we're answering
Thank you, Jesus. Father, we thank you for your great love, for your love that amazes us, a love that the world has yet to experience but needs so desperately. And we release our faith tonight, Lord, for the power of your spirit to operate through your church, through your body, to touch the lives of those that are hurting that are confused, that are frightened, that are angry. And we trust, Lord, in you, the only sure, stable, unchanging thing in this world, our God, our Lord, our Savior, and our soon coming King. And we give you all the thanks and the praise for the good that will come, Lord, in Jesus' name. And everybody said, praise the Lord. Praise the Amen. God. Give the Lord a hand tonight. Praise the God. Praise the Lord. Amen. Thank you, Mike and James. Thank you, Tim. Appreciate you sharing with us tonight. It's always good, amen, to be in the house of the Lord. Praise God. And I have a <clears throat> very simple word for you tonight, and it just kind of goes along with what uh, what we've been talking about, what, what Tim opened with. And... Uh, it's really about just having confidence in the Lord, no matter what the situation is, no what the circumstances are. Obviously, we live in a world that is, you know, in a lot of turmoil, and but that's nothing new, really. I mean, it's 
there's always been chaos and confusion where, where men ru rule and reign, amen? But, uh, but God is greater. He's bigger than all of this, amen? And uh, I think our focus needs to be on him and just trust in the Lord, amen? Do what we can do as individuals, what we should do, uh, but our confidence is not in man, it's not in even in our leadership. We need to pray for them, whoever they are, whoever gets elected. We're going to have our choices, and there'll be disappointments, and there'll be all sorts of things, but look, God is the one that's on the throne. Praise the Lord. And he's the one we have to have our confidence in. We need to do our civic duty, our responsibility as citizens, and, and that, that we will do. But when all is said and done, our job that's left to us is to pray for whoever is in that position. Whoever it is. <laughs> pray for those who despitefully use you. Amen. Anybody feel like they've been used by the government in their lifetime? Amen. Well, I mean... Yeah, there's always stuff that, that we don't like, or that we don't agree with. I, 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 don't, I can't think of a, uh, to be quite honest with you, a, uh, a president in my lifetime that I've been old enough to recall that did everything the way I wanted it or, or was doing everything the way I felt it should be or that was doing everything in a Christian manner. But here we still are, and that's because of the hand of God. And that's where our confidence has to be. Amen? So we're going to trust the Lord. There's enough stress and anger and frustration and division in this world without adding politics to it. <laughs> in my opinion. Amen. Amen. So we just, uh, hey, somebody gets in there you don't like, love your enemy. How about just obey the word of God? Try Amen. that first. Try that and see how that works. Praise God. Amen. Amen. That would be a good place to start anyhow. <laughs> Amen. So. Let's, uh, let's go to Philippians chapter 4, and I want to read verses 4 through 6. Philippians chapter 4, verses 4 through 6. You know, change is great, but ones are better. That's exactly right. <laughs> Amen. Fives are even better than ones, but <laughs> hallelujah. Of stress, there's a lot of you know tense things going on. You know, but praise God. God's on the throne, amen. We can amen. we can rejoice in the Lord, amen? amen. No matter what. In all things, he says that. So rejoice in the Lord always. And again I say, rejoice. Let your moderation be known unto all men. The Lord is at hand. Be careful for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving. Let your requests be made known unto God. You know, the other day, I, uh, you know, I'm, I don't watch much news, I got to tell you. It's just, it just aggravates and irritates. And, you know, the news, are, they're not reporters anymore. They're like instigators. Uh -huh. <laughs> they're trying to stir up everything all the time as if there wasn't enough of that already. And I just, you know, I was just going through some channels going from the sports channel, and I went over to, uh, I think it was CNN or Fox, I don't know, two or three, and just going down through the list, and I said, you know what, I just shut it off, and I just started thanking God. Tim, I just took your advice, brother, and I just started thanking God, and I started thanking him for everything that I could think of as far back as I could remember. Even when I was not living for God, God was still living for me. You know, mm -hmm. God had still died for me and was, was watching over me, and I just began to go through different parts of my life, different phases of my life, all the way up to the present for the home we have, the vehicles we have that make it possible for us to get around, the, the finances that we have that we can buy the groceries we need and, and take care of the things. Do we have everything? No, we got everything we need. We, we, we may not have everything everybody else has, but we got plenty. We're doing all right. We're, we're, we're not uh, withering away you know, or anything. So I, there's just so much to be thankful for. And the more you start thanking God, the more you realize how much there is to be thankful for. I could have gone on forever. I mean, it could have, I could still be sitting there doing this right now, to be quite honest with you, if I wanted to get down into every little detail. So, and I tell you what, after about 15, 20 minutes of that, I felt pretty good. 
all the things that I, I thought was closing in on us, you know, that's really horrible and all, they didn't seem quite as bad. They didn't seem quite as threatening and, and uh, frightening. Amen? So I think it'd be good for all of us. The, this, is a, this is a very, really, it's, a, it, it's talking about mature Christians. Mature faith is always rejoicing. Amen. Amen. You know, it's, it's supposed to be the babes in Christ that are always looking for God to do this or do that. I'm not saying God doesn't do things, but because obviously he does. All the time he's doing things. A lot of things that we don't, we're not even aware of that he's doing. Amen. Only, only eternity will, will tell. Mm -hmm. But as mature Christians, we ought to be able to rejoice. We, mm -hmm. we, we should be the people who are not intimidated, who are not frightened, who are not stressed out, but who can rejoice in the Lord. Look at verses 4 and 5. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again I say rejoice. Let your moderation be known unto all men. The Lord is at hand. Yes. Praise God. Be careful for nothing. Uh -huh. Amen. That the Lord is at hand. Verses 4 and 5 is a, actually it's a great segue into Philippians 4 and 6. Be careful for nothing. The Lord's at hand. Yeah. Don't worry about anything. Don't be freaking out. Don't be worried. Don't be frightened. In everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. Amen. Amen. So that command, it's an absolute command to rejoice. And it, it complements the non-negotiable here about worry. Rejoice. Don't worry about anything. Thank the Lord. Praise the Lord and don't worry. And don't be freaking out. Do not be anxious about anything. Yes, sir. That connection makes sense because if we're going to be busy rejoicing, we're not going to have time to be anxious. What I found out was all that time I was thanking God, I couldn't be thinking about something else. All the time I was thanking God, I wasn't worrying about anything else. There you go. Hallelujah. And the, the larger context of, of Philippians is asking this a, a rhetorical question. What would you have to be anxious about? Mm -hmm. <laughs> there isn't a square inch of creation where God isn't present and sovereign. That's what this world needs to know. Yes. That's what we as Christians need to believe yes, and live our lives based on that on that reality. Philippians 4, verse 19. My God shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Now, in the Greek, that word all means all. <laughs> it means everything. Whatever. Hallelujah. Amen. My God will supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Come on. I don't know what, what the need might be. The needs vary all the time. Sometimes it's financial. Sometimes it's physical. Sometimes it's emotional. Sometimes it's spiritual. Sometimes it's other things. Sometimes it's people. Mm -hmm. But God is supplied yes. according to his riches and glory. Not according to my meager limited way of imagining or, or desiring, but according to his abundance mm -hmm. of grace and love. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. See, if we could get out of our heads the idea that the future is something that God simply knows about and get into our heads the idea that the future is a place where God already is. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. We'd be a lot less worried about the future, wouldn't we? Yep. I mean, if we quit thinking about it as a as a as a thing, as a uh, something that God just is aware of, like God knows the end from the beginning, He does. He doesn't just know the end from the beginning. He's already in the end. He's in the beginning. Yeah. He's in the now. He's everywhere all the time. There's no place that He isn't. He doesn't just know about the past. He doesn't just see the present and know about the future. 
but he stands outside of time. And he reigns over all of it. Yes. Praise the Lord. Amen. Just like Tim said, you lose a loved one. Yeah, there's questions, there, there's hurt, there's, there's pain. But you can still love God. You can still trust the Lord. Yes. He's in charge. Mm -hmm. He didn't cause the death. It wasn't his, his, uh, you know, his desire to see that. He doesn't want to see us perish. He doesn't want to see us suffer. But we live in a fallen world. Yes. The good news is he's in it too. He's mm -hmm. here. He's in us. He's everywhere. We don't have to be frightened. Mm -hmm. Right. If you're honest, you've got to admit, God has never failed you. I mean, if you're really honest about it, you have to admit, he's never let you down. I've had bad things in my life. God wasn't the author of it. God's never let me down. Even, even when I made choices that were against what God wanted, right. God still took care of me. God still Thank watched out for me. God Thank still Lord. gave himself for me. Thank you, Lord. He may not have always given you what you wanted or worked out your life according to your desire or taken your advice on the way you wanted him to care for you. But when it comes down to it, he's never, ever failed you. I went back through my whole life. Yeah, there's been things I wanted. I wanted him to do certain things in a certain way. I wanted him to do what I wanted him to do. <laughs> but because God knows the end from the beginning and everything that's involved in it, sometimes what I want is the worst thing I could have. Exactly. I just didn't know it. Right. I've gotten some of the things that I wanted in my life. I wish now I'd have never gotten them. Uh -huh. They weren't as great as I thought they were going to be. Exactly. They were bigger problems than they were assets and blessings. Mm -hmm. yep. Yep. But even then, God's there. Yes. Praise the Lord. I, like all of us at times, you might have felt distant from God. But he's never abandoned you. Nope. He's never left you. He's never forsaken you. You have never been without God's love and care. Think about right. that. Never. No. In spite of what you might think or what you might have thought. We let circumstances dictate to us instead of the word of God. Circumstances change all the time. We know they do or they wouldn't be called circumstances. Right. But God never changes. That's the good news. That's something to rejoice about. Amen. I understand fear. I understand pain. Mm -hmm. But that is not the same as worry. Mm -hmm. Fear is legitimate. And it's legitimate for people that are vulnerable. And pain is a natural consequence of being a human being, mm -hmm. being mortal. But worry is a choice. Right. And the worry is made, is a choice, but it's a choice that's made in distrust. Mm -hmm. And it never helps. Worry contributes nothing to the problems that you're facing. Right. My grandmother, bless her heart, uh, she worried about everything. She would worry that she wasn't worrying enough. <laughs> now, I mean, that's idolatry, really, right. if you think about it. I mean, she was a Christian woman, but she worried about everything. She had a, a big family. There were 11 kids, and all of her kids had big families, or most of them did, but we were six in our family, six in, uh, in several of my uh, aunts and uncles' families. And, uh, and she worried about it all. As if, it's kind of like when I'm watching the Hawkeyes. I don't want anybody asking me to score. Are they winning? Are they losing? It's like a hex, you know. Come on, i got to stay focused. This, it's riding on me. <laughs> you know, if I don't stay focused here, they could lose. <laughs> don't, don't distract me, you know. <laughs> That's kind of the way she was with everything. Mm -hmm. But it never changed anything. Exactly. 
Look at Matthew chapter 6, uh, verse 27. I've worried before, but it didn't change a thing. And most everything that we end up, that we worry about, end up not happening anyhow. Right. Which of you, by taking thought, can add one cubit to his stature? Mm. Which of you, worrying about it, is going to change anything? That's what he's saying. Right? Say you're say you're five five nine. You want to be five ten. I had an uncle who was probably like five eight or five nine. Tried to get on the on the fire department. This is years and years ago. They had a height requirement. I think it was five ten or something like that. Whatever it was, he was too short for it. He yeah he did. He got stretched and everything else, but he never made it to five ten. And he, no matter what he did. He wasn't going to be an inch taller at 30 years of age. It just wasn't going to happen, right? And that's what we're talking about. You can worry all you want to, but you're not going to change anything by worrying. Right. What's the point? The Bible's telling us. Which of you, by taking thought, can add one cubit to your stature? Don't be anxious about anything, right? right. Philippians chapter 4, verse 5. Let your moderation be known to all men. The Lord is at hand. There, right there, is how to handle anxiety. Mm -hmm. God is at hand. Mm -hmm. God's right here. God's beside you. You're one with Jesus. Yes. He dwells in you. He that's in you is greater than he that's in the world. That's the perfect transition. That's what he's telling us. The Lord's right here. Don't worry about anything. Acts chapter 17, verse 27. They should seek the Lord, if happily they might feel after him and find him, though he be not far from every one of us. There he is. There he is. Psalms 34, verse 18. How do we engage in the reality of God's presence? That's what Paul says we do instead of worrying. We focus on the presence of God, on the fact that God is with me. You go through pain, you go through suffering, you go through sorrow, you go through all of these things of fear, whatever it might be. Instead of focusing on that, focus on the fact that God is here. God is with you. He's not going to leave you. He loves you. He's not the author of confusion and, and fear and anxiety, but of peace, love, joy, sound mind. Philippians 4 and 6 again. Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord, that you're always with me. Thank you that you supply all of my needs according to your riches and glory. Thank you, Lord, that by your stripes I was healed. Mm -hmm. See what I'm saying? We're, we're, we're asking, but at the same time, we're thanking him for what we know that he's already done. Because we're not going to get him to do something that he hasn't already done. It is finished. Amen. 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 So our prayer, our supplication, our seeking God, it ought to be done with thanksgiving. Yes. It ought to be done with a sense of you've got it under control. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Yes, Lord. That no matter what it looks like, you're in charge. Mm -hmm. We fill up the space where anxiety grows with thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. It's simple. Mm -hmm. Anxiety will take over. I mean, you, you just let it. But 
when you operate in thanksgiving, you take the space, you fill up the space that the anxiety is trying to control. Again, you can't have two thoughts at the same time. Right. Focus on the thanksgiving, the anxiety, you got to go. Thanksgiving and worry cannot occupy the same space. Thanksgiving is worry's kryptonite. Mm -hmm. You can't worry if you're giving thanks. It's that simple. <clears throat> Philippians 4 and 7. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice, rejoice. right? Yes. Give thanks unto the Lord, for he is worthy. And what happens? The peace of God will take the place of the anxiety and the worry yeah. and the stress. Amen. Hallelujah. Paul switches from emotion to memory. See, the, the person who lives in the emotions what we call a feeler, amen, would say, well, well, why can't we just love the Lord and why do we need all this doctrine stuff and, and all this other, it's just confusing. Just love Jesus. And then those that are all in the mental say, well, it's ridiculous, it's shallow. You, you need more theology. <clears throat> love isn't just something that we feel. Amen? Amen? The Bible says to speak the truth with love. Amen. And you can speak the truth and not do it with love. Right. Amen? And it's possible to express love out of ignorance. Right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You can think you love something and only to find out that that was just stupid. <laughs> you know, I just really wasn't very smart. 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 6. Re rejoiceth not in iniquity, but rejoiceth in truth. Mm -hmm. That brings thinking and feeling together. Rejoice in the truth. Jesus says, I am the truth. That's right. The light, the way. Amen? Amen. Don't rejoice in iniquity, in, in, in the things that are contrary to God or to the word of God, but rejoice in truth. Yes. My God is able to do all things according to his riches and glory. Nothing shall be impossible to them that believe. Amen. Nothing is impossible with God. Philippians uh, 4 and 7. The Lord is nigh unto them that are of a broken heart. No, sorry. Sorry, sorry, eight. That's fine. There you go. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, will keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. It'll keep your emotions and your intellect. Right? right. Sometimes we just get carried away with an emotion. It can be anger. It can be love. Anything. And sometimes we just try to overanalyze everything. Mm -hmm. But he's saying, if we rejoice in the Lord, the peace of God that passes all understanding will keep your emotions and your intellect as it ought to be balanced, confident in God. Amen. Verse 8. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, 
whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. Mm -hmm. That'd be some good advice for yeah. Americans, yeah. <laughs> for everybody. Mm -hmm. Amen? When you're anxious, you're dwelling on the negative in a way that shows a lack of trust in God. Amen. In that sense, worry wastes mental time. Yeah. Yeah. Paul says, look again in 2 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 5. You're wasting intellect. You're wasting mental time by thinking on junk that isn't like God, that isn't virtuous, that isn't honest, that isn't true, that isn't real. Casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Amen. Praise the Lord. That's why we have a, that's why we read the Bible if you want to know the truth. Right. And so I can capture my thoughts, God's thoughts. Mm -hmm. Let them overrule, override my thoughts. Because you won't find anything but beauty and truth. Amen? Amen. In this book. Amen. Praise the Lord. Philippians 4, 9 now. Those things which ye have both learned and received and heard and seen in me, do God of peace shall be with you. Amen. We've got to practice this stuff. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. This is just basic things, you know. But we forget. Mm -hmm. We forget that we're in the world, but we're not of the world. Right. We can't let the world define how we live, how we think, how we operate. Regular practice of, I have to trust you in this. Mm -hmm. It's called discipline. Right. And you're going through something, and what do you want to say? I got to trust you in this, Lord. Yeah. I know you're with me. I don't understand it all. It's not making a lot of sense to me mm -hmm. mentally and emotionally. I'm getting a little stirred up here, but I got to discipline myself to say, I'm, I'm trusting you. I'm trusting you. I know you're here. I know you're involved. I know you see it all. Yes, Lord. It takes practice. It takes practice because it's not natural. Right. Last scripture, Romans 12, verse 2. And be not conformed to this world. what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God which is to never leave you or forsake you Amen. lo I am with you always even to the end of the world Amen. praise the Lord Amen. we can do this church if we could he wouldn't tell us to we can be more than conquerors in any situation over every circumstance no matter how dramatic or, or, or or frightening it might seem at the moment. Fear is natural. If you're vulnerable, it, it's only right that you would have some fear. We all feel kind of vulnerable. There's all kinds of crazy stuff going on. Mm -hmm. Pain is just part of being a human being. Yeah. But we're more mm -hmm. yeah. than human. Amen. We are supernatural. We are one with God. Yes. We just need to not be conformed to what this thing wants mm -hmm. and be transformed by what God wants. Amen. And we can do it where God wouldn't ask us to and would give us the provision and the ability to do it by his spirit and through the word of God. Amen. 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 So I'm just encouraging you over the next <laughs> days, really weeks, months, years, because we're always going to be facing something as long as we're in this world. Right. Let's apply God's word to it mm -hmm. and see what happens. Amen. You can't lose. Amen. You cannot lose 
were you siding with the winner? Amen. We know the end of the book, man. Yep. We win. Yes. Amen. We are victorious. Thank the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let's keep that in mind. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Look up. Your redemption draws nigh. Hallelujah. Yes, yes, yes. Give the Lord a hand clap tonight. Yes. Praise God. Amen, amen. God bless all of you. Let's just, let's just trust God and love life. Hallelujah. I think it would be a good way to go. Be anxious for nothing. Amen. Just remember, he's with you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You're dismissed in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. God bless all of you. Good. Sure you're good.